Hey everyone, I'm Dan. Welcome to Van Diemen's Land Model Bench and to the final uh, video for the Academy. Oops, bumped the camera there. Academy T3476747. It's done. So in this video, I'm just going to give you a bit of a uh, talk about the final steps I did and also uh, what my overall impressions of the kit are, and then I'll finish up with some uh, photos of the finished model under some decent lighting. So anyway. Let's have a quick look at the kit as it is under this camera's lighting, which isn't as good, but you get the idea. So here it is, all finished. Um, I'm going to tell you, well, it was a pretty good kit, actually. No, it was more than a bit pretty good kit. It's actually a very good kit. I really enjoyed building this one. Um, so let's talk a bit about some of the last steps I did. So I think when I left you, I pretty much had the kit all together and painted, but I didn't have the tracks on, for example. So I've now fitted those. Um, if you haven't watched previous videos on this, you'll basically there's a, a top section and a bottom section and there's individual links around the sides. I've never done tracks like that before. Uh, my last kit I built in 135th scale for a tank was in 1984 or so and we had rubber tracks on it. Um, so I really struggled with that for a little bit, I have to tell you. I was getting a bit frustrated with it and then I found, just by coincidence, Andy from Andy's Hobby Headquarters put up a video on the Academy 234. He has done a video on this particular uh, version, but he was doing one on the on a more recent 234, but it has the same chassis and running gear as this. And he actually explained how to do those links. So if you want to get um, some advice on that, go and watch Andy's Hobby Headquarters. So I followed his advice and I struggled a bit with the first one, got a bit better with this one, and by the time I worked my way around to the other side, I was starting to get the hang of it. I still don't know if I really like individual links that much. I know if you're probably into AFE vehicles, it's probably be great. Um, but if you're a casual modeler, it's, it is a bit more of a struggle. But anyway, we got there. Uh, what else can I tell you about the kit? Um, I did a bit of a uh, bit of painting and detailing on it. So uh, some of the paints that I use for that, just for small bits like the metalwork. So for example, uh, the machine gun on the front, uh, these tow cables on the side, the metal on those. And also, if I just put it up, it'll probably shine quite brightly in this light, yeah. You can just see that bright, shiny silver bit. That's actually the saw. And yes, I know that's very bright. I actually thought myself, you know, if I was in this tank, I wouldn't be very happy about that. I probably would have gone out and put a whole heap of mud or something on it to, to dull it down. But I did find photographs where it looked pretty much like that. So I thought, oh, we'll have a go at it like that. Anyway, the, uh, the paint I use for that is from AK Interactive. And it's these ones here. So this is um, AK's Gun Metal. And this is in their True Metal series. Now if you haven't tried these paints, give them a go. They're really good. Uh, these are a wax-based paint. So you, you work with them very similar to oil paints. And you can use the same sorts of um, spirit and that kind of thing to thin them and to clean your brushes. But the um, secret to these is when you put it on, because it's in this sort of a wax, once you've put it on the surface and it's dried, you can actually polish it. So you can just get a cotton bud or something and rub it against it and it comes up really, really, really good. So I'm actually using uh, these metals now for my next build, which I'll give you a sneak peek preview of, which is uh, a little bit there. It's actually an armoured train. So the wheels here will be highly polished when they're done. Um, so I'll be using the true metal for that. I also find these really good for doing you know, finer details, things like engines, aircraft engines, cars, whatever. They're really, really good for that. So if you're a, uh, an auto modeler and you haven't seen these or tried these, give them a go. But they're really good. They're also great for small detail pieces in aircraft kits and things like that. really like that. So I use that for those. Um, on the back of the tank, uh, I did some work on the exhaust. So for the actual sort of burnt sort of rust sort of look on the exhaust stack themselves, uh, I used this set, which is Life Colors uh, Pigment and Color Set, Rust, How Reproducing and Painting. So that's not very good English. That's okay, because I'm going to give a shout out to someone that's been um, following the series on YouTube, and I'm probably going to get their name wrong, so it's all, all fair and love and war. Um, this is an interesting set because it's not just paint. It's actually 
made up of uh, three paints and three pigments. So the paints are corroded rust, streaking rust and uh, burned rust. And then basically you've got matching, well nearly matching uh, pigments. So we've got weathering marks, oxidation state and eroding burned rust. I've used this set in a previous build and again on this one and I absolutely love this set. It's just so easy to work with and it looks so good. Um, at least to the naked eye. I don't know how well the camera picks it up but it looks great when you look at it. So it's a little bit more expensive than most of the uh, live colour sets but it's a really good one so I can highly recommend that one uh, to you. Uh, I also used, what else did I use new on this set? Oh yeah, I used these as well in this uh, when I was putting on the oil paints. I used AK Interactive Survival Weathering Brushes set. And basically you get uh, different types of brushes for applying oil oil paints and things like that to your model. It was a bit expensive to be honest, but I was sort of inclined to get it because obviously the brushes are already in the right shapes, but also because I've been buying these recently, which is the Tamiya modeling brushes, the HGs, which are really nice brushes, and they cost a bit more too, but I've been really happy with them and I've been very I'm finding them very easy to work with. So I thought, well, maybe the AK will give me a similar finish. I'd say these brushes are okay. I don't think they're really worth the money. I think they're a little bit cheaper. They're certainly cheaper than the Tamiya. Um, yeah, I wouldn't buy this set unless they were on sale again, I think. But, you know, I've got it now. It'll do what I want, so... And it did the job, certainly, on the tank kit itself. So that's how I did all that. Um, now, for actually putting some weathering on the tracks and the wheels and around the back here. Um, as you know, if you watched one of my earlier videos, I didn't want this tank to look like it had been through the mud. I wanted it to look like it had been used in the fields, maybe in town or in villages that were unsealed roads. So dust was the uh, was the order of the day because probably more than any, I saw a lot of videos like that, not a lot of pictures, sorry, like that. But also because when I was growing up, my father was in the Australian Army and we lived in an army base and I used to see tanks quite a lot and armoured uh, personnel carriers and things like that and dust was by far the thing you saw the most of uh, okay it's Australia but contrary to um, popular opinion not all Australia is a dust bowl we do have you know, forests and things like that and these tanks were used in those kind of environments and they mainly suffered from dust so I wanted to sort of reproduce that kind of look I was more familiar with and since I'd seen photographs of uh, real T-34s like that, I thought, fair enough. So this is what I used to, to really get most of the effect. This is Mr. Hobby's Weathering Pastel Set 2. And you... No, that wasn't the one. Beg your pardon. I keep picking that one up by mistake. It's this one, sorry. Weathering Pastel Set 1. And you get basically three types of colours or three colours of dust. Like all these sort of sets, it's not cheap but it is high quality, it sticks really well to the model and you need very, very little of it to do a model this size. So, you know, a set like this will last me literally, well, I probably won't have to replace it, but if you're a mad keen tank builder, uh, I still think you'd probably get, you know, if you're just using them on the tanks and not using them on your dioramas, I think you'd probably get several years out of it, even, even so. So, not bad value when you're looking at them that way. The other thing I used on the weathering side of things is, of course, the Tamiya Weathering Master System. So I used set A and set B. Set A's got sand, light sand and mud. And I used that on the wheels and the tracks initially before I then, um, if you like, filled in the gaps with this set. And I also used some of the soot and rust colour from this set. And I used that on things like, for example, these tow ropes which were very bright and shining after I'd applied the uh, true metal finish on them so I used to use a bit of soot to darken them down which I think went, worked well also put a little bit on the uh, ends of the tow cables as well and of course the other place I used it was at, on the back of the exhaust so I uh, used that to actually put some exhaust stains on the bottom which seemed to match the photographs I could find and just a little bit of black around the ends of the exhaust tips there so Great fan of the Tamiya Weathering Masters. I know I keep talking on and on about them, but they're just so easy to work with and they're so good. If you're going to get one sort of exotic product for your model bench, you should really look at those. Um, other than that, that was about it for the 
I think for the painting wedding. Oh, the only other thing I did, I did use a little bit of um, Ammo by Mig's chipping colour, like this one. It's actually a good paint. I use this with a uh, brush painting and just with a really fine, you know, to me a brush, don't use it with a heavy brush because I think, like a lot of these sort of effects, uh, less is more. And uh, I just put a little bit on it because as I've I think I've said before, I didn't want this tank to look like it had been in the mud and also didn't want it to look like it had been around for years because most tanks generally weren't. So I just want it to look like it had been out in the field for a few months maybe um, after it had been refitted uh, as a German tank and uh, that's what we that's how we found it in this, this state. So that's basically all that was needed to get the kit finished. Just some overall impressions about the kit. Um, starting I guess with the actual box of parts. When I first opened up this kit I was quite intimidated because there's an awful lot of parts and you can see these are all the parts I've got left over. There's a ton of them. Um, the thing to keep in mind is there is four variants of just the T3476 747 that you can build with this particular model or uh, well, this particular kit. So there's going to be parts left over if, from whichever option you decide not to do. Uh, also, if you recall, I got three complete sets of wheels. Um, one, one rubber, I think I've got two rubber sets. Yeah, two sets with rubber um, treads and one set of steel wheels, which is just amazing. So you can pick any combination of wheels you want and you've got these left over in your spears box for another, for another day. And these are really nice quality mouldings too, so that's definitely a win. Um, the other thing I've noticed, just it's just a change, I guess, in the industry. I mean, when I first got into modelling in the 70s, I'm showing my age, um, you know, manufacturers are loathe to have any parts left over in their kits because it was all extra plastic and extra cost. So if you ended up with half a dozen parts left over on your model, you thought you were doing pretty well. But I have noticed with modern kits uh, more and more that they just, you know, duplicate entire sprues and if not all used, they don't care. So there are parts here, like for example these parts here, which are uh, for the Christie Springs. Um, they're never going to be used. They're just never going to be used because you never need that many of them. But they've just made these duplicate sprues and that's just one of the consequences of it. So you do end up with a lot of spare parts, which is good. But when you first open the box, it's a bit intimidating because you see so many. Just keep in mind that you won't have as many to contend with when you actually start building the kit. Also, with that in mind, on the actual box art, it does show the, if I can put it in camera there, there we go, the skill level is at four, with five sort of being the most extreme, and one being presumably the easiest. And I was a bit put off by that too, because as I said, I haven't built a tank kits like this since 1984, and even then it didn't have the level of detail this has got, it didn't have photo etch, it didn't have, uh, you know, the string to make the tow cables, it didn't have the separate links for the tracks. so. I was a bit concerned about that. I, I, I don't consider myself a great modeler. I, I, I sort of just slog at it. And I don't know if that's four. I think this is probably a bit easier than what it's saying there. I think anyone who is watching this video, if you're into modeling, could build this kit and build it successfully. Um, if you've got a little bit of patience and perseverance. I don't think there's anything about this kit that makes it that, really that hard. So I was pleasantly surprised uh, by how it all went together. Instructions were good. Um, they remind me a lot of, Tam of Tamiya's, uh, which I, I guess is perhaps not that surprising because they're probably sort of aiming at the same sort of market. The instructions are quite clear. There were a couple of steps that I did do some minor revisions on. I did them in a slightly different sequence, which I've already covered in another video. I also found a couple of uh, references to part numbers that weren't correct, but nothing major. I was able to quickly identify the parts I needed on the sprues. So I found the instructions overall to be very clear and straightforward. The paint guide for this kit wasn't as great because um, there are four different colour schemes and if you decide to do the type that I've done, which is what's on the box art there, um, you only get a very small side and a little bit of the sort of side profile, a bit of the turret, you don't get any view of the top deck. So you have no idea how that camouflage is supposed to go across the whole tank. So I ended up having to look online for that. Again, if you watch one of the previous videos, you'll see me nattering on about that and what I had to do. Um, 
So that was the problem there. Decals, again I've mentioned this but just to finish off, um, they are the worst part of the kit in my opinion. I really didn't like the decals. Uh, they were very thick. They didn't adhere particularly well. They didn't settle very well. I had to use an awful lot of uh, decal setting solution to try and get them to sit down. Uh, if you're going to do your tank and you're not someone who typically puts a clear coat over the top of your decals, I would suggest with this kit you do, because I have a feeling if you don't, probably in a year or two these things are going to dry out and drop off the model. So even if you're not someone that normally clear coats your models, yeah, do it for this one if you're going to build this kit. Um, the photo etch on the back was a little bit of a challenge, but that wasn't, I don't think, the photo etch's problem. I think that was my lack of experience that we got there. I really do like the effect though, I think it looks really cool. And I particularly like the fact that Academy give you the choice because they also include a solid plastic piece for here if you don't feel confident about doing uh, the photo etch, which I thought was a very nice touch. And um, yeah, that's the sort of thing that makes the kit that much more enjoyable. Um, so, accuracy, I nothing jumps out at me. I'm not a rivet counter, so if you're into T34s, maybe you'll know better than me. But when I was researching this particular subject and looking at photographs of the real tanks uh, online uh, nothing on this kit jumped out as being particularly wrong uh, it'll look like it was a T34 so I'm pretty happy with the, the scale and the appearance of it and all the rest of it I think it looks the part um, fun factor this is for me personally anyway the most important criteria um, we've all got kits I'm sure sitting on our bench somewhere that are half built because we just lost our mojo they just were kits you had to fight you know pit parts never fit quite right the instructions were a bit ordinary every piece you had in the kit needs to be filed my um my sort of kit like that at the moment is the airfix 124 scale hawker hurricane i love the hawker hurricane i think it's a beautiful aircraft and i wanted to build that old airfix kit i knew it was an old kit but i wanted to build it for nostalgia but I'm struggling with it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to pick it up again and finish it because I've started a video series on it, but it's one of those kits. I had no problem like that with this kit. Uh, this kit was really, you know, a couple of little challenges here and there, but it was a fun build. And uh, I was really, really happy uh, to be working on it and never really found it a chore to go back and finish it off. So, yeah, fun factor-wise, it's an excellent kit. Uh, if you're normally a Tamiya uh, tank builder and you haven't tried some of the newer academy kits i definitely recommend this one to you in fact i'd recommend it to anyone even if you're not a tank builder and i'm not uh, as you can see with a bit of effort you can at least get the whole thing together so it is a good kit and it is worthwhile and i guess the test would be if i went back in the shop to buy another t34 um, you know would i buy another academy one of it absolutely in fact to be honest with you i'd probably look for the academy one now because I know how good this kit is and I know how much fun it is to put it together. So I would definitely uh, try and seek it out. So there you go. That's the Academy T3476 747. It's a great kit. I had a lot of fun building it. I had a lot of fun uh, sharing with you how I went with it. Um, thanks to Ron, by the way. Shout out to Ron, who uh, always gave a bit of encouragement on the uh, comment section on YouTube. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. I also want to give a shout out and I'm probably going to um, make a horrible mess of your name so I, I will apologise in advance I think it's Radu I hope I, I don't know if I'm spelling I don't know if I'm saying your name correct Australians we, uh, we're very welcoming people but we're not very cultured so um, my apologies if I got your name wrong but we were talking about life colour paints and he was sharing his experiences uh, with them as well he hasn't had as much luck unfortunately as I have had with them but it was really interesting to hear his thoughts and uh, how he's going with it. And thank you everyone else that's put up questions and comments. So gave, us, gave me a thumbs up uh, on the series. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be doing another one a bit later in the year. But for now, thanks very much for watching. And uh, we'll, take off, we'll finish off the video with uh, a few stills that I took under some better lighting of the finished kit.